Hello, and welcome to the first ever Ryan solo video. Yay! But Ryan, Andrew's the funny one. First of all, how incredibly rude. Secondly, I have one thing that Andrew doesn't have, and that's a very specific degree in animated films. So let's make use of that degree and talk about some bad movies. The first couple of movies I wanted to talk about are a trilogy of kids movies based off the works of H.P. Lovecraft. If you don't know who H.P. Lovecraft is, he's known for popularizing a specific sort of cosmic horror style, which is all about how insignificant you are in the grand scheme of the universe, which is bonkers for a theme for a kids movie. So H.P. Lovecraft is really famous for creating the Cthulhu Mythos, which is a series of novels that take place in the same universe that has spread out to multiple authors since him. It all deals with really spooky kind of horror and it typically follows a uh, well-educated person slowly losing their sanity as they become aware of this horrifying world. I feel like this movie's trying to go for a kind of Coraline or Tim Burton style aesthetic, which is fine. If you, if you haven't seen Coraline, it's a great movie. But if you saw Coraline as a kid, you're lying if you're telling me that movie didn't fuck you up. I'm going to try and explain the plot of the story as it goes on, but I'm going to be totally honest. I've seen these movies two times each, and I still don't understand it. I have no idea how a kid's supposed to get it. Maybe I'm just dumb. Let's hop right into the first movie and see what these this fantastic trilogy has to offer. Howard, dear, are you scared? There's no need to be frightened. The storm can't hurt you. It, it's not that, Mother. It's just tonight's the night we visit Father in the bad place. The movie starts off, we find out that H.P. Lovecraft's dad is in what's called the bad place, uh, which is an insane asylum. Cool. Cool start to a movie. Everything makes sense so far. King Abdul, the Necronomicon, the words, the symbols. They will lead to, to the sleeper of Relay. I swear to God, I knew what was happening like a second ago. The Necronomicon <gasps> must be destroyed, son. Help! Swear you'll destroy it! This guy is literally going crazy and attacking people. Why do you open the gate while the person he's trying to attack is right in front of him? So after going to visit the dad in an insane asylum, where the dad literally attacked Howard Lovecraft, the mom decides to give Howard Lovecraft the very book that drove the dad insane. Nerfer go, ran a zen flugin. <laughs> Using the book that the mom gave to Howard, he opens a portal to Relie, all right, which is Cthulhu land, all right? So he gets in Cthulhu land, and then he meets Cthulhu, and Cthulhu wants to kill him. Where the hell did he go? He just lifted the bed and he disappeared. Okay, so this clumsy Cthulhu jumps at the boy, misses completely, and then falls into a chasm and asks for help. No! You just tried to kill me! No, don't help him. Don't ever help him. You just said it. He tried to kill you. Here, give me your... your... Uh, take don't do it. Ew. Pong. Oh my god, Howard is strong as fuck. So Cthulhu is called Tutu Haman. He's not Cthulhu yet. And now because Howard saved his life, Howard is now Tutu Haman's master. I need to get back home. My mother and my father need me. Uh so Cthulhu agrees to help get Howard home. And this is the first time in these movies that we see this thing that they do that's hilarious. Basically, they'll do travel montages, but they keep using the exact same scene over and over again. So it looks like they spent hours to walk like 30 feet. So then Howard and Tutu Haman were spotted by the minion ripoff of this movie. And we learned that Howard is a part of some prophecy. He from the prophecy? 
Yes, he appeared in the heart of a storm out of nowhere, as if ripped from the other realm. Now go back out there and find them. That shouldn't be too hard for the likes of you. Definitely evil. So then Howard has dinner with like these squid kids and we found out his dad was in this spooky universe as well. Doesn't really matter. Okay, so then Cthulhu and Howard Lovecraft have a snowball fight where they do a good, the bad, and the ugly reference and a Matrix reference. It's pretty cool. I'm not gonna lie. And then Cthulhu just kills Howard. I forgot to record a segue because I'm a professional, so here's the next scene. What happened? Long ago, Relay was the most beautiful kingdom under the two suns. Mere words could not capture its beauty. It was so good. The poet Abdul Alhazred said the citizens forgot there is bad in the world. Lest we forget. The people of... All she's saying is that the world used to be cool, but then someone summoned Cthulhu and then Cthulhu destroyed the whole place. And in order to save the kingdom, they froze everything, including Cthulhu. And the world has been frozen ever since. Now they need the three books that were written by Lovecraft's dad in order to save the world. We will hold you in our thoughts until your triumphant return from the Shoggoth. Thank you, your majesty. All right, Spot, come along. La -di -da. What was that? La -di -da. He just did it again. So they set off to find the book from Ron Perlman, and there's another awesome travel montage. Came from. So they make it to the realm of the Shagoth, who's got the other book, and Howard falls down a slide, has a great time, but Cthulhu's stuck upstairs. <laughs> okay, this is amazing. They tried to establish a catchphrase for this character 55 minutes into this movie. For the Shagath. Take a ah! Who dares disturb the sleep of Shagath? Another lore dump, but who cares? I don't know what's happening anymore, anyways. And I shall savor it after I gobble you up and slowly digest you over a thousand years. That's the Howard! <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't even close. He died in one hit. I have delayed long enough. You are no one, Howard Lovecraft. And you have nothing. Nothing in this world to save you. Ah! The Elder Side. No! You are nothing. You have nothing, Howard Lovecraft. Except the... Is that a nickel? After Ron Perlman goes all Nagasaki, they get the book, and then they start heading back to the totally not evil girl, but not, uh, not before another awesome travel montage. Am I dreaming? Can it really be? No more suffering, my subjects! We are finally free! So they get the book back to the girl, and now they can save Relay, right? Wait. There's 20 minutes left? I fooled a Lovecraft from my true identity. Let the sleeper awake and destroy Howard Lovecraft! She was evil? I cannot control. I am changing. Hey! <sighs> Oh no, Cthulhu's under control of the evil girl? 
What are they gonna do? This is our kingdom too! Oh my god, it's the totally irrelevant squid kids from the beginning of the movie that come at the perfect time despite not knowing they're going to be needed here. Crazy! <laughs> and they know karate? Ah, insolence! I will make you suffer! She just grabbed the book. It was that easy. So Howard, Cthulhu, and the squid kids fight back. They win the day. Howard learns magic for some reason. And then there's a really cool Avengers-style action shot. So Howard uses the book. He gets back home. He gives the book to his insane dad, and his dad is all better. I guess you could say I didn't really HP love the craft of this film. <gasps> I guess you could say I didn't love the craft of the film. Andrew, what are you, what are you doing here? How, you mind doors? We filmed that skit so long ago that I think my hair has visibly grown since then. <laughs> All right, time for movie number two. I actually watched the second movie before watching the first movie, so I thought that I would understand the plot of the second movie if I went back and watched the first one afterwards. No, I don't. So after the exact same opening shot as the last movie, our two heroes are finally reunited. Master Howard, we do not have much time. The book. You must not give it to anyone, even your father. Keep it safe until I find you again. It's morning, Howard. Now put your book down and let's get ready for school. And don't keep mother waiting. Mom's evil in this one? So after the events of the last movie, Relier is now saved and no longer frozen, so we get to admire all the minion ripoffs just walking around with the exact same animation. I'm going to see him in my astral state. You cannot come with me. When I'm in my astral state, there are risks. But this is an emergency. I must do this for Howard. Apparently there's something bad going on with the kingdom, and Cthulhu has to go visit Howard in the astral state in order to talk to him, but there are dangers with seeing someone in the astral state. My consciousness will be separated from my body, leaving my body vulnerable to attack. I'll be quick though, and it'll be safe in the throne room. What an interesting and fun, cheap way of doing exposition. Okay, I'm not 100% sure, but when Cthulhu astral projects, he, I guess, misses a lot and ends up at a lot of random locations. And I think that a lot of these are just other locations ripped straight from other movies by the same studio. And they're just reusing assets. So evil mom, Go takes Howard to see the bad guy because she's under his spell or something. And as he's in the middle of casting a spell on Howard, Cthulhu appears to save the day and teleport them both away, but only after we get to see the unanimated character models of both the mom and the dad. Okay, so it's the same villain as the last movie, but I guess that it's a dude now because I'm probably convinced that the female voice actor quit or something. I don't know. You'll soon be safe. I'm taking you. Cthulhu gets captured mid-teleport because of the dangers of astral projecting, and Howard Lovecraft ends up at Miskatonic University. Miskatonic oh. University does not allow guests in the own library after hours. Oh, sorry. Who are you? I am Dr. Henry Armitage, AM, PhD, DLIT, Chief Librarian. Miskatonic University is also the leading institute in magic and the dark arts. 
I love how you can obviously tell that this character was modeled and designed after the original ones because he looks like he's totally from a different movie. So Mark Hamill's character, who is a professor at Miskatonic University, knows all about the dimensions or whatever, and he agrees to help Howard find the journals so that he could free his family and Cthulhu, I guess. And then we get the scene of the two bad guys talking about Nearlethotep as if we're supposed to know what that means. But right after, we get probably my favorite thing to come from watching these movies, which is the most amazing meme format. Behold! Like, seriously, you can put anything in there and it just makes it hilarious. Behold! Hello. Mark Hamill and H.P. Lovecraft go to the asylum for some reason, where they find H.P. Lovecraft's dad. I don't know why the evil guys didn't take them with him, but he's here, and he's surrounded by Ron Perlman's. Luckily, Mark Hamill knows magic, and Lovecraft still has the magic nickel, so they save the dad. Ah! What is it, boy? It's spreading! Turning into a fish! Abdul Alhazred cast a spell on your son. Would Howard's journal possess some insight into this spell? Howard, what have you done, boy? Have you lied to your father? No, I- Liar, liar, pants on fire! How do you have another journal? What the fuck is happening? I gave you back your journal. I found a second one, though. I took it from the Shagoth, and it's how I got back home from Relay. Did you hear the delivery on that voice line? That was terrible. And then this is a dope magic train montage of my words learning magic. This is so cool, yeah. Uh! And then this is a dope. <coughs> Three trials lay beyond the wounds. Past them rests the journal. If the trials do not kill you, then you'll give me this book. No. You will do this, or I will kill all of your friends and your entire family! Jesus Christ, man, calm down. So the bad guy threatens to kill all of Howard's friends and family if he doesn't go get the book for him by solving some puzzles. Luckily, Howard uses some magic to escape with the astral form of Cthulhu, but Dr. Henry Armitage dies exactly like Dobby. <laughs> Except he's still alive. The plot demands him to be. Abdul al Hazred wants to turn Tutu Hamong into Cthulhu. If that happens, your world, all worlds in the megacosm will be destroyed. You cannot let him have any of the journals. The book and the words inside it by themselves are merely dangerous. It was through experimentation, exploration, that we discovered the true nature. Remind you of something? Here's where shit really goes off the walls. So we get a flashback of the dad who opens a portal to a planet called Yagoth. Ends but up Yagoth driving him insane, but the only after world taking as really the book. So the and dad, he's no, the dad, the books, he the whole world, the sky, the dad, he's in turn, knows books. where the books are. So he took the book from the dad, but only after taking the books. And the dad knows a puzzle around it that where to find a worthy Lovecraft where the book is. Sent his other offspring, the Arathotep, to awaken Tutu Hamon, the sleeper of the way, from his slumber. What is happening? How are kids supposed to understand this? So they just do this massive lore dump through this character Dagon, but like the guy's voice is so incomprehensible. Essentially, he just said since the dad wrote the books, the whole world is cursed because of something to do with the books. So he took the book from the dad because the dad is insane and he put a puzzle around it that only makes it so that a worthy Lovecraft can go grab the book and save the world. To the puzzles. Right. Wait a minute. 
This is just the puzzle from Bleak Falls Barrel in Skyrim. Hey guys, this is Ron from GameShampoo.com. He said it. He said the catchphrase. Nothing really interesting happens for the rest of the movie, so I'm just gonna power through it. Basically, they get the, they finish the third puzzle, they get the books, and then they use the books to save the mom, and that's the end of the movie. I have a confession to make. I haven't seen the last movie of this trilogy, nor do I plan on it at all. These movies are really bad, and uh, I don't think I have the patience for it, so I hope these first two movies give you a good enough taste of what the whole trilogy is like. I just wanted to say thank you so much for sticking to the end of this video and watching it the whole way through. I know it was really long and I didn't intend it to be when I started it, but uh, thank you so much anyways for watching. I promise these will get better in the future. This was my first go around. There's a lot of things I'd like to do better, but uh, thank you so much and uh, see you in the next upload.